Hello everybody, welcome to the official live cast of the crucial Group A Round 3 match between Yatsik and his Orcs and Kfog, we'll call him, with his Wood Elves. Um, so Yatsik won the toss, chose to receive, get some damage going, makes sense. I can show you the groups here, um, they're both on four points but Core has scored more touchdowns and touchdowns four is the primary tiebreaker. So anything could happen here, right? If Lepeg wins, but only wins one nil, these guys could like draw two two and they could both qualify. Um, oh no, actually no, cause uh, yeah, no, that's right, yeah. Or like, you know, if Yatsik wins, he's definitely top the group. If Kfog wins, he's definitely top the group. That much we know. And a draw will definitely be good for Kfog because if they draw, whatever happens, he scored more than Yatsik. So, um, that is, they're both green. Is, is, is this okay or should we go red and blue? Red and blue is really easy to tell who's who and the, the green is just is hurting my eyes and this big mass of everything looks the same. So let's go red and blue. Um, Wood Elf cheerleaders for Kfog. Um, yeah. Okay, and I can tell you a little bit of background about the, how they qualify and stuff. Jacek is Polish, qualified through the Champions Cup Season 4. And Kfog is Danish and also English and qualified through the Champions Cup Season 5. So they both came through the ladder and playoffs. Actually, also Kfog won the ladder right outright. So, um, yeah, you know, and Kfog is a legend tabletop, right? Tabletop, Fumble, Blood Bowl 2, Blood Bowl 3. He's the lad who's done it all. Um, incredible player. But nice setup here from yeah, Yatsik's really good as well, right? D done really well in the playoffs. So they're close enough that it's not going to take a ridiculous dicing for Yatsik to win, right? Just the odd critical fail or whatever. You know, much like, much like you know, some of my games. Uh, <laughs> you know, like people aren't people aren't terrible. So, just a few dice go, rolls go their way, and you're in, you know, Kfog could be in a lot of trouble. Safe moves at some point. Love to see it. Yes, the tree is a good defensive tool, isn't it? Tight cage, I like that more. It did make him a little bit more susceptible to the pickup fail. Maybe could have moved the big one here first. But, uh, yeah. No, blitz wasted. And tree, not trees, not a tree. Um, troll go stupid. Well, not the best start for uh, Yatsik, was it? Two players down of the Woodies and one of his own players down. And the troll lost his tackle zone. But he does have the ball picked up and in a cage. So he's got that going for him. Hello, Keith. Um, they're both on four points, so the winner will win the group. If it's a draw, then it's lo well, then Kfog is definitely through, but it's likely that Lepeg will win his final game and eliminate Yatsik. Yes, it is a pretty disastrous start, right? A subtly disastrous start for Yatsik because yeah, he's mostly just been getting one one hit per turn for the rest of the drive now. You're welcome, Keith. Glorious tanks. Yeah. 
Yeah, you have to eliminate elves. Like if you don't remove elves, you're just gonna you're gonna struggle. It's as simple as that. It's one thing. Well, uh, one in thirty-six, but not a critical one. Like, do you know what I mean? It's it's one thing securing the ball. That is good. You know, he is not he is not fending off elves in his backfield, so that is good. But you've got to get the penetration, and you've got you've got seven turns to get there. But you've got to get there, and it's tough. You know, it is tough. The elves just elves screen and hit your back if you base up and stuff. You've got to base up really well. Nope. So, versus a top player, you've just got to remove elves. You're just not going to win without removing them. I, 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 would, I would hazard a guess and say very, 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 very few Bash teams have beaten top Wood Elf coaches without removing anybody. <laughs> very few, like vanishingly few. Unbelievable low chance of that. Oh wow, watching uh watching Breaky T's game there is an unbelievably good chance for Breaky T here. Whether he's seen it or not, looks like he has. Interesting. Interesting. Super interesting. So, you know, nearly a H cage. Tragic, stupid troll. But, um... And, the, yeah, this is the thing, like, the way to, you know, the way to play the woodies here is just to keep beating off the orcs, isn't it? You know, you can just bring in assists, punch things, and you just slow them to a complete halt, as long as you don't accidentally leave a gaping hole. Like, uh, like I did. Start his turn with an uphill breaky T, but he didn't. Well, not his turn, but the sequence. Right, nice. I'm not going to look at that game anymore. I'll wait. I'll wait until I do the replay. And yeah, there you go. Look. There's a big wall of elves. And you've had a guy stunned and another guy down. And you've got to get through this somehow. Like, it's so hard, isn't it? It's just so hard to get through this. It's so hard. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> it's absolutely horrible to face. And even if you make it so you can't get blocked, then they just dodge everybody back one square. And you're, you're still struggling to get anywhere. <laughs> Daniel Bennington. Wow. Kalon. Must be at least, what, like six years ago? <laughs> He's fine. It's okay. Fucking see. It. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Daniel Benning Field, wasn't it? Daniel Benning Field. Yeah, though you caught me out, yeah, it was about six, 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 six years ago or something like that. Oh, look at that! We made a removal. So, that gives us half a chance. Interestingly, not blitzing with tackle. <laughs> Kenny Rogers. <laughs> 
The red wall. <laughs> Hello, Don. It's not over. Don't say it's over. It's just really hard, isn't it? The problem is it's just really hard. <laughs> Don't know he went to hold. Do you remember PC's song? You've got a no winter. Common, no winter. Foul away and stuff. I don't know. Beddingfield. Beddingfield! Is it Beddingfield? Yeah, Beddingfield? Beddingfield? Beddingfield. Yeah, Beddingfield. Beddingfield. We got there in the end. Thanks, Benbo. <laughs> now, I actually does feel longer than five years ago, to be fair. I'd say like 12 years ago. Even though it's more like 20. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to 1D because it's a 2 plus, right, with wrestling. With upside, massive upside. It's funny, isn't it? Just the, like, the kind of mental shift when you play Wood Elves. You feel like a 1D block is totally fine. Whereas when you're playing Orcs, you're like, oh god, I'm not going to 1D this guy, right? It's funny, it's funny the difference. Now, oh, okay, he's got block and stuff, but I guess it's because it's so easy to get a 2D block with the other teams, isn't it? Yeah, easily 20 years, yeah, yeah. Years. Could be like 22 or something. Oh my god, this, this troll has been stupid three out of four turns. Which isn't great. <laughs> Why would you do this? <laughs> okay, so jamming in as much as he can. But he has to get... He, He's got to get through this. It's hard when you when your troll goes stupid so much, isn't it? Is the problem. I think he would have upped it if his troll wasn't just standing around like a dork every turn. Yes, this is actually open as well. It doesn't look open, but it is. But I don't think Cause in any rush to go ball sacking right. Just, just scream and scream and scream. How long ago was it? 2001. There you go. Oh no, released 2002. It was 22 years exact. Well done, Jim. Oh, he rolled a 1 and it was away from tackle. Puts in a team reroll. Yes, turn seven if the score is going to happen. Yeah, that, that's the, that's that's the standard conservative Wood Elf play, isn't it? Is screen, screen, dodge, screen, screen, punch, screen, punch, dodge, and then turn seven if they're going to score anyway. Then just have a really good chance to get the ball off them and score yourself. <laughs> It's all yeah. It's running all season, so the season ends at about like the the like ninth or something of December, it's like just after the World Cup. So yeah, it's quite good. This isn't it? it's quite good. Like extending the cage out. The risk is that Core sees some next level chain that Yatsik doesn't, and then he opens you up like a can of beans. Um, 
I had that happen to me versus uh, Tumish. So. No, three months help. Three months. Seasons. They are lengthy. Like, Cole's going to have a look at things, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? Like, But I don't think he's going to do anything. <laughs> he could. He could try. Like, he could try something, you know, and see if it works, right? Like, just start with an uphill. Like, you can just start with a random uphill and then have massive payoff. But I don't think he will. <laughs> I think he'll just play really as safe as he can. But there are times when you could do things like, you know, I'll start with a one D here and uphill and then like, you know, if it gets this guy down it unlocks something or whatever. I don't think this is the case where that was even on. But you know, it could be. It could be the case. Right, it must be one second. Glorious. No, I won't give in. Until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. Jim Ducker. Oh, I was just say, no time bank. Yep, still time bank untouched from both coaches. And honestly, this is like the harder half for Yatsik, right? So this is doing pretty well for him, like that he's not gone into time bank yet. And he is quite far forward. This is going, this is pretty successful for him. But he really does need to, you know, think about next turn's going to be difficult, right? He's got to get forward and he's got to make this the strip. Well, I mean, there's not a strip because he's got show sure hands, but he's got to make the ball sack attempt as difficult as possible. And get as far forward as possible as well at the same time. So yeah, turn seven is beyond critical. Thank you very much, Sith Trooper. Staying fantastic six months in advance. Flip me. Daka Daka, thank you very much. Absolutely glorious. Oh, and he failed that rush. Doesn't re roll it. I like that rush actually. Really like getting around the back. Really like that. I found versus core that I had to do that a bit. What, did he use, did he reroll and then and then failed it? Oh yeah, he did. I oh, did a double rush. Okay, I'll be honest, I wasn't watching, but it's all right. Got to look at chat, you know. <laughs> yeah, this was the problem by putting the tackle in. He's obviously gonna like he's obviously getting beaten off. Right, the tackler is so obviously going down by basing him. That takes away any decision KFOG really has to make about fighting. Because there's no way he's going to dodge him over and he can just blast his tackler. <laughs> I'm not Big Chichi. I, I have to. I, I couldn't concentrate on chat and this game and that game. Plus, it'd be better if I didn't know what was going to happen anyway, I thought. But it's interesting, isn't it? It's an interesting match, to be fair. Like, but that's just the unfortunate thing, isn't it? There's a re there's a, another match, uh, Diamond versus Caster, happening right now. But we can only watch one at a time. Oh, dodging away! Interesting.
Should he should he not have blitzed away? Oh, he's already blitzed. <laughs> then no, he should not have done that. <laughs> we can just blitz this for a pow, right? Blitz this for a pow, and then we're good. Is the play here? He should have just simply blitzed twice. He'd already blitzed to get the hit on the uh, tackler. Yeah. How about three or even four? Oh, so he could he could power him, and then he could blitz this one. That would have been even better. Okay, no, I don't like this. I think block this one, right? And if you power him, then you can blitz this one and power him, and then you can go right through here. Like, fully through. Like, double rush with it, you know, like, make six rushes or whatever. And get everything through into a cage like there. Now, what's he even having range? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This blitzer. Oh, these are all in range as well, right? The big ones are in range. The big ones are in range. Two blitzers are in range. And I guess this one's going to go there, right? The first thing K Fog's gonna do <laughs> is this guy up to here, probably. No, there's a dodge. And a rush. I kind of liked him in there, honestly, because then he's a scoring threat. And it's pretty hard to base him. And you've got like an instant handoff for the thrower. I actually really did like him there. Should have jumped. Yeah, he should have done, shouldn't he? Where was he here? One, two, three, four, five. And then he could have gone six and then tagged that guy as well. Yeah, that would have been way better. Missed out on the jump. Missed out on jump equity. Keith would have seen that. Keith the second blitzer through, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, he could have, or he could have gone there. Yeah, that was definitely the play. Yeah, yeah, that was one hundred percent the play. I always did say that would be the biggest weakness of otherwise good players, is uh, spotting those, those kind of more marginal ones, right? Like less obvious. Like when it's to score a touchdown, everybody's going to be doing jumps and stuff, right? When it's when, when it's the score a touchdown turn, or they like get into range turn or that sort of thing. Everyone's going to always see those, but those kind of like more subtle ones are the, can be the ones that people miss. Um, yes, Max. Um, so, because Woody's got 10k more than Dark Elves and got an extra skill, that's why he went with them. If they didn't get the extra 10 TV... Um, he would have gone with Dark Elves, he said. Nailed the spot in the jumps part, there you go. Now you've just got to get as good as k -Fog. Easy. Mm. This isn't too difficult, is it, for Yatsik? I think it's... Wait a minute. This guy's in range. If you power the dancer, you can hand off on a three-person score and you can three-dice him. Maybe you can't three-dice him because you <laughs> sidestep where you couldn't go. You could also just hand off to the big one and uh, blitz through on a 2D. 
Oh, he's going to 3D him and dodge. Yeah, okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, that's probably the best, isn't it? Yeah. Makes the dodge. Makes the rushes. Gets his toddy. So, interestingly, Yats... Honestly, this is the interest... The most interesting thing about this is Yatsik choosing to receive, right? Because... He had to score on turn eight. Whereas if he defended first, and like you know, had turned over K Fog and was one nil up or whatever, then he could have just turtled and not given up a like a sack. Or if he had uh, been stalled out on, he could have scored early and tried for the turnover. Now obviously he couldn't really turn over, but. Um, he couldn't really score early at all there, could he? But he could have tried. So it, it's kind of... the need, When you need a win and your opponent doesn't, I think is the time where kicking makes the most sense. When you need a win but your opponent doesn't. Yeah. Yep, it is funny, isn't it, Max? It is funny. But, um, yep, Niagara, that was nice. That was very nice from uh, Yatsik. A good player, very good player. <laughs> Dev let him score because he wanted a one turn. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Kfog needs a draw. Kfog is through with a draw. Yatsik might be through with a draw. Um, if either of them wins, they top the group 100%. If either of them lose, they're likely out. But if, the, if it's a draw, then K-Fog is definitely through. Because he's got, a, he's got more touchdown score than Yatsik. Well, I could actually just show you, I could show you the group. I can show you the group there, right? Um... They're both on four. Lepeg's on two. Blue Max is on zero. So you'd imagine Lepeg will go to five and score a touchdown, which is going to make it hard for um, the others. <laughs> it really is prime for collision. Um, yes, if Blue Max wins or draws, like then Lepeg's on three, right? So Lepeg has to win. So you have to operate under the assumption that Lepeg has won, I guess. But, you know, Blue Max has lost both of his games so far. Um, but, you know, he's not, he's not a million miles away, right? Like, it's not, he's not incapable of beating or incapable of drawing versus Lepeg whatsoever. So, while I'm sure Lepeg is favoured, he could easily draw or lose that game. But I think if you're careful or Goyatsik, you've just got to assume that Lepeg's won, right? Which means a draw is definitely good for Kfog. And Yatsik probably needs a win. Wow, I never seen that from the big one before. He just wound he just winded up the finger. I've literally never seen that animation before. I mean I've never really paid attention before, I guess. Oh. I love to do the wind up finger in real life. <laughs> I've never noticed it before. Look! How great is that? <clears throat> How's he solving this? I've got no idea. I'm not Big Kev. But I'm sure he's got a plan. <laughs> Look, he's greedy! 
<laughs> yes, he could blitz the big one and not push him to there. Oh, solid defense. Leap Blitz doesn't really make any sense. You'd have to Blitz from here, right? And then push him so he can go out. And block him and block him. Or do you mean this one? Oh, Leap Blitz this one, yeah. Oh, and he stood here, so Leap Blitz him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was going too complicated there. Yeah, just leap. And then what? This could be a 2D. Run run this guy around? Why hasn't he got a catcher to run around? Oh. Well, he's filled that in now. That might make it easier. Look, Keith, I'm allowed to brain fart when I'm just reading chat and obsessing over... When you said leap, I thought, what, you're leaping to hit this guy? But that doesn't work, because leaping to hit this guy... You know, I was thinking of the ridiculous chain fills and everything, but yeah, just leaping to hit this one was easy, wasn't it? And that would have taken him making minimal dodges. I mean, it's still basically on, isn't it? I mean, the initial hit's harder. I guess Yatsik hasn't seen it. <laughs> Can you shoot a play, guys? Yeah, you should have put this guy here, right? Because then you've got to dodge somebody that do you, do you have to hit with him last this is quite good to stop the catcher going around and tagging him but this guy can probably go around and tag him and then you've got a leap for the one day or you could uphill this guy you could uphill this guy well I shouldn't say anything I'm sure Kfog will work out the right way of doing it. Right, starting off with a handoff. And he's got it. The initial blitz pushes him to there and sidestep to there, then he pushes him to here, and then he pushes him out. So so he he, he does need, yeah, I like the uphill here, you see, and then that takes out the, the troll, which gives you three assists here. Maybe this, I don't know if you need this guy later or if this guy can run around to tag him. Yep, he can run around to tag him. So we go four plus leap, or maybe not. Maybe you dodge in, because then you've got then you're keeping the reroll. Because like it's hard to get the pushes right, so the the dodge in might be better than the leap. Oh, he leaps in, gets the push.
now has to dodge with that guy, right? I guess you could do the block first and then dodge with the catcher instead. So he doesn't like have his dancer die on a fail. Oh. Oh no, he's got sidestep. Okay. Duh. Boom. But I mean he's gonna have to make the extra dodge anyway, right? Otherwise you'd have three it'd have been a three two out. I'd still a 3 2 out because he's got sidestep. <laughs> right, this is expertly done by K Fog, isn't it? He's out of re rolls though, but now he can roll a pal. Bosh, and then he can go there. Yeah, it would have been just a 2 plus. So he's made it a 3 2, whereas if he'd filled it in, it would have been like a 4. So yeah, he did the right thing. So here we go a 3 2. 2 2. Fails. Well done. Best in the world. <laughs> there you go. I mean, almost like he's absolutely the best in the world at doing one turns. Yep. A game with literally dozens of different players. And he's the best. Um... Yeah, yeah, exactly, my old line bed. Yeah, exactly. Versus, 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 solid, solid now. But yeah, incredible, incredible. And, uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't so good, was it? it he, he definitely needed to uh, put it on that line to stop that hit. He should have seen that that was where it was coming, and uh, he should have seen where it was coming. And stop that angle, which would have made things a bit tricky. That is true, Slayno, yep. Yep. Classic Blood Bowl, make all the correct decisions and then get punished. Look at this. You could screenshot this. The, uh, <laughs> the, the <laughs> maybe the only occasion ever where K Fog has used more of his time bank than his opponent has. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep, great, great, great stuff by Core still, yep, for sure. <laughs> yes. Oh, K Fog, the bonus time burner. You don't see it often, but it just shows how tough that one turn was, doesn't it, really? Looks like he's not dackering here. Interesting. Uh, it was a one in nine fail. I don't know if it was a double one. Yeah, it was a double one. But it was a three plus anyway. It was a one in nine fail. It was an 11% fail, even though he rolled a 3%. And uh, he did have a solution, yep, yep. Of course he did. You don't need to ask, really, honestly. He's, uh, oh, I guess an extra reroll there. That's very handy. Block full block. Yeah, it was three two with a reroll and then two two without. So I can tell you what the odds were. He was only sixty sixty two percent after he'd got to that point. No, he wasn't. He had a two plus dodge as well, didn't he? He was fifty eight percent. So. That was even after getting all the pushes and everything. So yeah, not not great odds altogether. 
Imagine if he got the bonus reroll instead of the, instead of the solid defense. That would have uh, really helped him. But he's got it for this half, and you know a draw will be good enough for K Fog if he can get it, and might be enough for Yatsik still. So it'll be interesting to see how much Yatsik pushes this, right? Because a draw might be good enough for him. Out of a hundred percent, if I was Yatsik, I would have waited for the other people to play, right? Uh, Blue Max and Lepeg, because if Lepeg draws that or loses that game then a draw is good for Yatsuk. Yeah, Rat wouldn't wake up for such odds, yeah. yeah. Skaven are pretty busted when it comes to the old one turning. By the way, he ha still hadn't removed anybody, uh, Yatsuk, but he got a removal there, and obvious instant Apo there. Turn one K overdrive is absolute perfect time to Apo. Not basing everything. I think it's okay to base everything, right? Because the catches would just have to dodge away. And yes, it's a one in thirty-six, so it's super unlikely to fail. You know, if if you've got if you're making them do lords, then they might fail a different one and then leave like some ones in contact that you can punch. So I'm all for basing everything like a loony. Yes, yeah, the KO came back. But, I mean, he started the second half with 11, didn't he? Which is, you know, you're really going to struggle to beat KFOG if he's got 11 mouths. Yeah, just full base. I'm all about the full base. Well, we could see a dodge fail. No, use the reroll. You know, um, Yatsik could punch something, Kaz it, base everything, K Fog snakes, and then makes like four Kaz, or KOs, stuns, whatever, and then, uh, you know, things can happen. Things can happen. Le Peg. Blue Max versus Le Peg is 17 UTC on Thursday. There you go. Runs back to blitz this guy. Gets the full power. And the AV break. Just a stun. Honestly, you kind of want him to score, don't you? Yeah, I guess you don't want him to stall, though. But you really want that guy to score next this turn. But k just likes having him as an outlet, doesn't he? Makes complete sense. Wow, first action, 1 in 36. That would have led to a two dice on the ball, right? Which probably wouldn't have led to anything because, you know, elves. I'm not a fan of not daffering, honestly. He's not going to go through here, is he, surely? Now 
now he is. He thought that was safe enough for the ball, and it probably is, isn't it? Probably is safe enough the ball. Though, if you think that's better, you could have moved that first. <laughs> and and that. <laughs> well, no, it's fair enough actually wanting that guy through first. Okay, he failed the one in 36. No, it was just a one in six. But nothing's based. It was the last one to dodge away, you know? Like, I, really, I think Yatsik has been too passive here. Probably should have just based up everything. So that if there's an early fail, he at least gets a bunch of hits. Now he's basing. But the problem now is... K-Fog was flatter before, wasn't he? K-Fog was flat in the early stages. Now he's quite spread and uh, like layered. So it's not it's not just pile in, right? And he's not piling in anyway. Yeah, Kefog is assured qualification on a draw. Yatsik isn't. It's interesting, turn 12. It's not go turn yet. But um, he'd certainly like to be in a better spot than this. This isn't great, is it? It's not terrible, but it's not great. Doesn't quad skull. Gets the uh, 2 plus out for the catcher. And the cage corner. I just think too not aggressive enough. Too uh, too conservative. Kev must be counting squares and that must be absolutely fine. He doesn't stand up that dude on the side. He could base the ball here, couldn't he? If he uh, blitzes this catcher. Could move in and base the ball. We all know that means you win the game. I mean, to be fair, there's a good chance that, you know, if he got the troll touching the ball, um, K-Fog would have to dodge. And if he has to dodge with a ball carrier, then that gives him a 3% to win, which is pretty good. It's more than he's got at the moment, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so.
so yeah He's definitely not moving the troll now, is he? If there was any doubt. I mean, if he can defend and win 1-0, then obviously he wins, doesn't he? But I just feel like this isn't going to work. <laughs> well, maybe it will. Ball very exposed, particularly if he dodges after this. Yeah, the only question is if you make these dodge outs first before one and nine, which you probably have to. Makes a screen with everything. And gets the full power. And a removal. Oof. Oh, he's got an apple, but probably going to be enough, isn't it? This is the problem with just trying to, like, defend space when your guys are movement 5 and add 4+, plus, and your opponent's guys are movement 8 and add 2+, plus with dodge. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky. Could six plus dodge in and vomit on the dancer. That seems pretty good. Tricky, isn't it? tricky. I mean, if he just keeps basing things, then maybe k Folk will 1 in 36. You know, we've seen people we've seen people fail uh, tripwires a number of occasions. So, you know, if you make the ball carrier dodge or hand off, then it could it could fail. Whole trick. Um, Yatsik probably needs to win. If either wins, they win the group. If they draw... Kfog definitely qualifies and is likely to win the group. Um, if they draw, Yatsik might still qualify. It depends on Lepeg, if Lepeg can win his last game or not. Yes. Yeah, movement five big ones. You know, they're faster than they used to be, but they're still slow compared to Woody's, aren't they? Pretty cheeky, right? Wonder if you'd have re-rolled that.
Yeah, I mean, Woodies are a great team. <laughs> Woodies are a great team, and they do get 10 TV and a skill on top of Dark Elves. Which are also a great team. But, um... Maybe, maybe the Wood Elves might fall off in the latter stages, right? But they're just a really good team, aren't they? It is hard to beat them. K-Fog was right, you know, like, it's just hard to beat them. You can't really, if you score quickly, like, they're just better at, like, two and three turning than Dark Elves are, aren't they? They might be worse versus Skaven than uh, Dark Elves are, I don't know. Yes, exactly, Milo. Yeah, yeah. They're still they're still woodies. They're still great. They're just you know they're leaps of four plus instead of a three plus, and they they lose the one turn a bit, but like they're still they're still great. Like they lose odds on the one turn, significant odds on the one turn. To be fair, not having sprint, but um, yeah, they're still a great team. Like through normal through uh, through like you know, fourteen turns of the game, they're just the same as they were. Right? They're slightly worse on the sack turn because it's a four plus leap instead of a three. Also, if you cas the hell out of them, then, and you can make like a mega bunker, then it's significantly worse on the sack turn. So, the sack turn can be a lot worse, and the one turn is, is worse than it was as well. Yeah, they're still an absolutely great team, yeah. Yeah, they probably shouldn't be tier two ever. But they kind of are, right? Like tabletop. Tabletop is a used to Wood Elves being the best, so they're like, well let's make them tier two so they can still be the best then. Doesn't really make any sense, but there you go. That's what happens. <laughs> But, you know, Dark Elves are still doing really well in this tournament, and I'm not sure that they're uh, they're bad. But the thing is, Wood Elves can get banged out. But the problem is, even if you bang them out in in overtime, the Wood Elves are maybe worse than the Dark Elves, maybe in overtime. But in a normal game, I think they're better. Zons being tier 2 is insane. Like, Skaven's kind of fair, because Skaven are, uh... Like, they're a bit rubbish, right? The fact that they, they don't get, like, stacks, do they? The thing about Skaven is they don't get stacks of skills. Like, they obviously get an amazing one turn. But, like... Skaven's not too bad, but Zons, it's crazy. Crazy making zones tier two. Yeah, that's that's the problem the, the, with dark elves, right? Dark elves. I mean, I got banged out by or well, the alliance, and then I couldn't do anything. Whereas wood elves would still have no problems if they're banged out. Though I mean, they are more likely to get banged out, but still, the fact that they have no problems when banged out, and you get the one turn. Honestly, the getting to one turn puts Woodies above Dark Elves, doesn't it? So, instant regret of Wood Elves now, of Dark Elves now, honestly. Absolute instant regret. But Dark Elves are solid, aren't they? I don't know. Incredibly easy on the left, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. This is, uh... Not the easiest touchdown of K-Fog's life, but it's, uh... Very, very, very easy, isn't it? Well, the draw might not be enough for Yatsik. 
I mean, well, I mean, yeah, he's satisfied with it, I guess. The problem is, if, like, if he goes for the win and fails, then he loses, doesn't he? And a, a lose, then he's almost certainly not going to be in, enough for him. Yeah, we weird, weirdly passive play by him. Like, I just. I just don't think you can do it versus Woody's. I just don't think you can play like this versus Woody's. And I don't think you can play like versus Dark Elves either. Like I just don't think you can play it versus any Elves. Even Dark Elves would be fine with this, wouldn't they? Cheeky tackle tag. This is why I hate the tackler, right? What has this tackler done this game? <laughs> like pretty much nothing. And then the turn where he allegedly nearly really needs him. First of all, the game's already, well not lost, but isn't won. And even if he could do anything, or he just get tagged by like a random elf. Yeah, I'd rather have Mighty Blow, yeah, so it's not it's not dead versus anyone. I think, like, Tackle is, you know, better on tabletop because Amazons exist. But in this tournament, I don't really like the Tackler. Even though Dark Elves and Wood Elves exist in this, and Skaven, I just feel like it's not good enough without Amazons existing. Right, what the hell can he do here? <laughs> you can dodge and double rush and 1D this guy and power him and base the ball. Or you can blitz and like try to scream, but like. I'm not sure he can even scream with anything. Yeah, that was my strat, Chirgan, when I, uh, with my disastrous seven guard attempt was the troll will just three, I split every turn, and then I've got my mighty bow player, and then I've got seven guard. <laughs> it was a pretty funny build, but, um, it didn't work, but, you know, maybe it's just dice, who knows. There's a lot of dice in a Blood Bowl game, isn't there? But I mean, this was a absolute advert in how not to defend, wasn't it? It was weird, it was really passive, and you know, obviously in my opinion too passive, and then it's been borne out by, you know, Core having this easy, easy left side progression, and uh, I can't really even touch him here. You have to, can't really make him roll a dice on turn 16. He doesn't have a tr he doesn't have a uh, goblin either, so he can't get the troll throw teammate on turn sixteen. So Yatsik will need help from Blue Max to qualify, probably. Funny, isn't it? My six plus in with the troll to vomit on the dancer. He just he just clearly should have done because he hasn't got 
close to doing as good as that the rest of the game, the rest of the half. Okay, well he's done something. Um, no, of course not. I mean, it's it's not playing at all, isn't it? Is the perfect result. He does have the problem with like the other players and stuff that could do things. The only winning move is not to play. <laughs> nah, that's not true with Naf style, right? The problem with progression is your favourite player dies and you feel sad. Which makes even winning look a bit rubbish. But um, with Naf. Winning's everything, so it's all right. There's no point doing these one at a time. You have to make them both. So he's literally doing nothing there. Wow, I hate that. He's doing nothing, is he? The stun there is good, isn't it, actually? Because now we can ignore him and... Uh... Oh, double one. Dice. Yatsik's made, like, as many snakes as, as K-Fog, basically. He's made, like, two snakes. So this guy gets knocked over and he's got a hand off to the catcher. It's some twos, but can he make it better than that? Probably. That's true, Elf. That's true. So there you go. That saves the dodge. But it is going to be... Um, a rush and a handoff. 2-3% chances. First one is negotiated. The tripwire. Will the tripwire get Big Kev? No. Nope. So it's 1-1. One, one. <laughs> stack it, stack it. <laughs> so, you know, there's a chance of a timeout. There's no real chance of a movement 6-1 turn. The chance of the movement 6-1 turn is so low as to write it off. But the timeout, I mean, you should really just defend against the timeout, right? I don't think you should defend against the one-turn touchdown. You should just defend against the riot. But Big Kev is defending against the one-turn. Which, to be fair, if Yatsik scores this one-turn with movement six, with no re-rolls, like he's just not gonna he's not gonna attempt it, is it right? He's obviously got a higher percentage chance of rolling timeout. <laughs> so it's best to play for the timeout, hundred percent. Did he even have anybody who could make Oh for the Kandoff, yeah. Yeah, you probably could did have somebody for the ball box, you're right. Well done, Keith. Big mo big noob K Frog didn't make a bubble box. Yes, K Frog definitely qualifies with a draw. Yatsik might qualify. It depends how Le Peg's game goes. <gasps> a quick snap! Uh, there was no chance with a quick snap either.
All right, stack the catch. I thought you meant stack the rush, but okay, an idiot. Stack the catch as in surround it. So there you go, that is a 1-1 draw. Um, Yatsik doesn't try one turn, obviously. Um, so what that means is the group isn't updated yet, as you can see, but that means Kfog has four touchdowns and five points. And Yatsik has three touchdowns and five points. If Lepeg wins, he will at least score one touchdown and be on five points. But his touchdown difference won't be as good as Yatsik's. So Lepeg has to win by scoring two touchdowns against Blue Max. So if Lepeg wins, scoring two touchdowns versus Blue Max, then Lepeg will actually top the group? Yes. So Lepeg is either going to top the group or not qualify from the group. Oh, wow. Kfog in second could be a terror matchup for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, that's right, isn't it? There's no way. There's no way that the peg can finish second because if he wins one nil, he's on. He's on three touchdowns with his with a plus one. Oh, no, because he's won. No, if he wins 1-0, he's the same as Yatsik, isn't he? If he wins 1-0, he's exactly the same as Yatsik. Oh, God. So if he wins 1-0, then him and Yatsik will have to play off. And if he wins and scores 2... Well, if he wins 2-0, he'll win the group. If he wins 2-1, then him and Kfog will have to play off to see who wins the group and stuff. So, it's all quite complicated, but he definitely has to win anyway. The peg has to win. I will update you with all the permutations when he plays Blue Max on Thursday. But for now... Kfog and Yatsik are in the qualifying spots, so congrats to both of them, and Kfog is definitely qualified, whatever happens. So, massive congratulations to Core, and thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.